This is part two of section 8.4. We want to combine four times the square root of 18K minus the square root of 72K plus the square root of 50K. Now we need to simplify this as much as possible, no matter what. So let's talk about simplifying these. First of all, we have a variable in each one and we know how to deal with variables on the inside. We know how to simplify those. When we get to where we are combining these, we must have exactly the same variables in exactly the same places, okay, in order to be able to combine them. So that's in addition to needing exactly the same square roots. So let's simplify 4 times the square root of 18k. Now we've done the square root of 18. It's right here. It's 3 times the square root of 2. So I'm going to have a 3 on the outside. I'm going to have a square root of 2, but I need to take care of this k. Remember what we do. We look at our index. In this case, we have an understood index of 2. And we ask ourselves, does 2 divide evenly into the exponent here? How many times does 2 go into the understood exponent of 1? Well, it doesn't at all. So that means I have no k's on the outside, and I'll have 1k on the inside. So this is 2k underneath the radical. And then the same thing happens with each of these k's. So this is minus the square root of 72. We've already done this on this page. See, a square root of 72 was 6 times the square root of 2. And then the k is stuck on the inside. Plus the square root of 50. We did that right here. Square root 50. So it's 5 square root 2. and the k is stuck on the inside. Okay. So what I have here is 12 times the square root of 2k minus 6 times the square root of 2k plus 5 times the square root of 2k. Now each of these has the same square root. We have a 2 and a k on the inside of each one. They're all square roots, and I do not have any variables on the outside, so that means these are all like terms. I can combine them. 12 minus 6 is 6. 6 plus 5 is 11. So this is 11 times the square root of 2k, and that should be my answer. Okay, so let's do this with minus the cube root of 54 plus 2 times the cube root of 16. Okay, so this is negative something. Do we have 54 anywhere? I don't believe so. So 54 is divisible by 2, and that gives you 27. And then 27 is divisible by 3, which gives you 9. It's divisible by 3, and it gives you another 3. Now we are looking for cube roots, so we're looking for three of a kind. So I can I have these three threes. So a three goes on the outside, a two is on the inside. So this is negative three times the cube root of two. Okay. Plus two times something. The cube root of sixteen. Well, I have sixteen right in here. Okay. So I cover up the 32 and above. I'm looking for three of a kind, so I have three twos here and one left over. So this is going to be two times the cube root of two. Okay, so this is negative three times the cube root of two plus four times the cube root of two. Now we have exactly the same kind of root, so we can add in front. Negative 3 plus 4 is 1. You could write this, but most of the time you're just going to write the cube root of 2 as your answer. Okay. 3x times the cube root of xy squared minus 2 times the cube root of 8x to the fourth y squared. This is going to be really important. You can see right here how it's a little bit difficult to see whether the three belongs to the uh, radical or if it belongs as an exponent. 
but in this problem, you can see that our exponents are of a larger font than these, so that can help a little bit. But you really want to be careful when you are writing down your problems and everything because that, that index can drift and it will mess you up completely. Okay, so for the first one, I have 3x times. All right, the exponent here is a 1, and 1 is smaller than 3, so that doesn't simplify. The exponent here is a 2, which is smaller than 3, so this whole radical does not simplify. It's the cube root of xy squared is equal to 2, not equal to, minus, sorry, 2 times, all right, the cube root of 8. Well, the cube root of 8 is 2. Okay. Now, 4 is larger than 3, so we need to simplify this. 3 goes into 4 one time with a remainder of 1. So I'm going to have an x to the understood first power on the inside, and I'm going to keep an x to the understood first power on the inside. Outside exponent, inside exponent. Now 2 is smaller than 3, so that part does not simplify. Okay, so what I have here is 3x times the cube root of xy squared minus 2 times 2 is 4x times the cube root of xy squared. Okay, so we simplified our every radical. Now we need to see if we can, we're allowed to combine them. I have cube root x, y squared on both of them, so th that part's the same. But I also have to make sure that the variables on the outside are the same. I have x and I have x. So these really are like terms. I do 3 minus 4, which is negative 1. So this is negative x times the cube root of x, y squared. And again, I want to warn you that if you're not being careful how you type these in, how you write them, you'll write this. making that cube, that, that cube root into a cube on the x, and that would be wrong. It's very easy mistake to do. Be very careful about that. Okay, so let's add 4 times the square root of 3 over 3 plus 3 times the square root of 3 over 9. Here I have to add fractions, and I have to remember all my fraction rules too. In order to add fractions, we need a common denominator. And I can easily change this 3 into a 9 by multiplying this by a 3. So I multiply this by a 3 as well. So this becomes 12 times the square root of 3 over 9 plus 3 times the square root of 3 over 9. Now I have a common denominator and I have the same radical on the top, right? So I can add 12 plus 3 to get 15 times the cube root of 3 over 9. Okay, now I have to simplify the radical if it can, and 3 is a prime number, so that doesn't work. That doesn't simplify any further. I also have to reduce the fraction, okay? Now, when it comes to reducing the fraction, I cannot reduce this 3 with a 9, and that's because this is not a 3. It is the square root of 3, which is 1.7 something. And if you try think about it, you, if I wrote this as a decimal approximation, you would never consider reducing it with a 9. So as far as reducing goes, you can consider that an x. The 15 and the 9, though, those are both divisible by 3. If I divide this by 3, I get a 5. If I divide this by 3, I get a 3. So this answer, in simplified form, is 5 times the square root of 3 over 3. Remember, it's tempting to cancel these, but this is not a 3. It's some other number that we cannot write down the full decimal approximation for, so we use this as shorthand. Okay, your other option would have been, if you had recognized right here, that the 3 and the 9 would reduce, then you would have gotten the answer more quickly. But again, that's, you know, something you have to recognize, and it, I, it doesn't happen every time. Okay.